Ladies and gentlemen, we, people of color, daughters and sons of immigrants, we belong to Europe. I am, we are the story of Europe. Hello everybody and welcome to this new episode of We Belong. Uh, we Belong is the podcast and platform that gives a voice to the new daughters of Europe. Uh, I'm Yasmin Iran and I am your host. And today we are joined by Nadia Nadim, who is a footballer, a Danish and Afghan footballer, but also one of the most prominent and uh, successful Afghan footballers of all time. Um, she has also worked for PSG, which is Paris Saint-Germain, a very big team uh, in France. And I'm very happy to welcome her here today as we are at WISE uh, Qatar a conference. So welcome, Nadia. Thank you. Appreciate it. Amazing intro. <laughs> Thank you. So, Nadia, for every guest, we start with one question mm. uh, that best describes uh, your work or you as a person. Um, so what is one word that defines Nadia? No limit. No limit. Mm? No limit. Why? Tell us why. Um, well, basically, because um, I think uh, right now, most places I've been, people always tend to put you in boxes and then say, this is who you are, this is what you can do, this is what you can say, and those are your limits. And for me, I think all my life has been about proving these people wrong and kind of removing the limits that's been set around me. Like, example, I was born in Afghanistan, Muslim, with the cultural background that I have. I was told that girls do not play football when I arrived in Denmark as a refugee kid uh, because there are other things that are set up for me. I, I should learn how to cook. I should prepare to be a wife. And 18, 19, now I'm going to be engaged. 21, I'm going to have two kids. So that was the, the life that people were expecting for me. So, you know, my box, my limits are already there. But I... I said, that's not true. As a girl, I can do whatever I want to do. Uh, it doesn't really matter for my background. So I started playing football, became professional, played for the national team. And as you said, I've played a lot of big clubs. And when I was a professional football player, I wanted to study. And I was told, again, as an athlete, you cannot study in this level. Uh, I wanted to be a doctor. Uh, again, a box above my head. And again, I was like, well... Maybe there's no one else who's done it, but I can show you that's possible at the end. So for me, I think this words kind of describes me very well. And it has a lot of examples I can come, but we're going to be sitting here the rest of the day, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could. And it's so interesting, all the experiences that, you, that mm. you have, but also your ambition. And that's, I think, something that defines you. No limit. It means that you tell me I can't do something, mm. I will do it and prove you wrong. Yeah, right? definitely. And as you said, you grew up in a society where women are um, confined into uh, a type of role. And so even in football, I mean, I feel that, you know, people often follow this type of big clubs for the male teams. Yeah. And so stig like the stigma around female players is, is quite big. So how did you feel starting? I know that you started in a very young age. You were 10. Yeah. So tell us. Um, uh, yeah, if you start comparing it to, to the, May, the, the men's game, definitely a lot of differences and a lot of inequality that you see. And then, as you mentioned, there are, most people are very interested in the men's game, what's going on, and really most of the time didn't have a clue what was happening on the women's side. But that's something that's changing. And I think from where I started uh, uh, till now, there's been a huge movement, a huge change in the women's game and, and uh, on the right direction. And, you, and I love that. I love that you, you can address the issue, which a lot of athletes are, a lot of organization, you know, FIFA, UEFA are also taking it serious. And then you can use your voice to bring that change. And I think, you know, um, and you can see it and I feel it on my own body when I'm playing um, on the field that the change is happening so it sucks that there has to be this way but that's life you know and um, mm. and if you want to change something you have to use your voice and it's going to happen but it's not going to happen overnight absolutely change is a long time process and also uh, you have this 
let's say barrier mm-hmm. in a woman. Yeah. But also, as you said, come from an immigrant background, and coming from an immigrant background, you also faced um, some difficulties. While, for example, you were um, um, you wanted to play um, for the national team, mm. and then under the Danish law, you were not a citizen, so it was difficult for you are, until you were 18 mm. to represent the country where you were not born there, but you grew up there, yeah. right? Yeah. And so after that, you, you, I believe you faced some difficulties with FIFA, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, in general, first to getting the Danish citizenship uh, took me yeah, almost seven, eight years. And it was weird because at a certain point you start to accept or, you know, you feel like you are part of the society. When you're going to school, you have Danish friends, you speak the language, you're paying taxes, you know, whatever. And still you're not really a part of it, you know, because you're, you have, you don't, you don't belong almost. And then I remember I had to go through these tests to prove that I'm Danish enough, I guess. <laughs> one of them tests is really dumb. Uh, you you go there one hour and you have to res- like you know it's almost like a school test history political science everything um, and then after that you're allowed to have four wrongs and if you pass then you can go to the next step mm. so for me I went through all this obviously because I want to play at the highest level I I want to play for the national team because that's where the best players represent the country and then from one day to the other oh uh, yeah I suddenly was accepted somehow you know, on the paper. Um, mm-hmm. But this acceptance thing, you know, um, is, I, I mean, uh, there's what well, more than 80 million refugees around the world, you know, so this is like a very big topic. And, and, and I know a lot of people who have this double thing, if, even though they're integrate, uh, integrated in the society and their families come like in the 70s, but still not feel a part of society. And that's, for me, it's, it's sad. And the reason is that you, if you want to get the best out of these humans who are actually resources and they can add value to the, to the community, you should start accepting them, you know, because otherwise you have this problem that you have a group of people who do not feel home here, do not feel home back where they were born. And then, and then, and what, that's just waste of space, waste of human resources, waste of talent quality so um and yes it hasn't been easy i'm not gonna lie you know and and but i am not someone who gives up quickly mm. um and as as you said before you know i think one of them that is gonna remove the boundaries that are put in front of me and mm. prove them wrong absolutely and as you say it's a waste of talent yeah and for us that we belong it's absolutely what we try to um, to tackle as an issue, mm. the fact that no matter how much you do for society, you're still somehow reminded that you don't belong. Yeah, it's crazy. So we're here to say that we belong, right? Yeah, definitely. It's crazy. You know, a, a crazy example I come up with, we were in the Euro 2017 with the Danish national team and uh, and we were doing really well and I was killing it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> no humble. Uh, oh, no, uh, yeah, no, it's no, but it's proud. no. the reason, because it, it makes sense that I want to explain to you. Because I was getting, also I get a lot of attention in general in Danish media because as I said, I'm one of their like front figures in, on the national team. I have been for a long time. And I remember a lot, two politicians um, were like, you know, hurt or, f- um, I don't know the right, without cursing the right word, but but hurt about why I was getting that much attention. Mm. So imagine I'm representing the country mm. and, and then you have people who are against you, even though they want the country to win, but they want not you to succeed. Yeah. And for me, this is like, it was so weird, you know, because mm. you're like, what's your problem? Like, what have I done to you? Yeah for you to feel this way. Mm-hmm. I'm right now making the entire nation proud of most of them. And you're bothered about this? Yeah. Like, why? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and so there's always going to be, as you said, there's always going to be people who are not going to accept you and no matter what you do. And, and, and that's something that I actually have accepted. Mm-hmm. And now I don't give a fuck because <laughs> now it's, you know, I can choose. If they don't accept me, I'm like, bro, I don't need you anymore. Exactly. I, it's almost you need me. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's how you want to be. You need to be somewhere where Absolutely. Yeah, they need you, you know. And it's interesting because, you know, especially during the Europe, mm. right? 
we had uh, for the main side, that's yeah, yeah, the, the one we've all followed, especially I'm Italian. Yeah. So I was very happy <laughs> being at the stadium yeah. when we won. But then the hate that black and brown uh, British football players faced in England, yeah, it was terrible and it was a shame. And we see so much mm. in Italy, see it in France, no, no. Mbappé getting like all these people because they are people of color. When you score. You're part of us. France won the, the World Cup. We're all happy. We're all French. Yeah. But then outside of the World Cup, there is problems. You don't belong. So it's also this idea of, you know, not like seeing you as an added value, but also recognizing that you are as Danish as them. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's true. And, you know, again, it's, it's, it's a weird concept. And I think everyone loves winners. And, you know, and, and I always say, you know, you always have to be that good that they cannot ignore you. That's one of my favorite things mm. because, but also it, it, as you say, as soon as it doesn't go and you're not like that person, which is normal human, you're going to have downfalls at, at times, then you'll see all the little keyboard warriors coming mm. uh, from each corners. But that's the reality, and, and 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 I know it's sad to say that I just take it as it is. Um, and but I think you have to have tough skin, and that's the cards you've been dealt with, um, and deal. You just have to learn how to deal with it. Is it gonna change with time? I don't know. Mm. I hope it will, uh, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, for us, will keep us going. It's really knowing that it will change it eventually. Like, of course, we can't change the mindset of everyone, mm -hmm. right? You can't. If a person thinks that you are different and you will never belong, how can you do? Mm -hmm. But then you being there, visible, and showing that, you know, you're actually here not to steal anyone's job, not to, you know, as, you know, all these stereotypes that a refugee or a, an immigrant has, you're here to bring an added value and you're doing it very well, by the way. By the way, like let's mention it. Thank you. you. Like, well, thank FIFA, you. Thank you. Uh, female uh, um, cup, right? The, the in 2021 for the for the Euro, right? Uh, if we won it, yes. No, we won the Euro ch French championship. The French, yeah, yes, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, champion. I'm very bad at all these. Don't worry. Yes, <laughs> that's okay. There's so many for, cups, anyways. I got you. I got you back, Jasmine. Yeah, the yes. French yes. actually, the French yes. tournament. I, yeah. I, so. I mean, I know. I mean, as I said, you know, I, I just do my thing. And then and at the end, there's always going to be haters no matter what you do. Uh, uh, and I just hope that the reason I'm also, as you guys are doing this, you know, is about to tell the people who do receive the hate that, you know, it, it's, I mean, it's sad, but try to keep going. Don't let them, mm -hmm. you know, devalue you or, or mm -hmm. demotivate you. Uh, and then, yeah, that you can do whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter your background and that you've been a sub-pointer refugee or immigrant mm -hmm. because for me, that's just one state has been like homeless. You're not going to be homeless all your life. Yeah. At that moment, yeah. you had no choice. Exactly. Because your life were at stake and you wanted to survive. That's just human instinct. Everyone right now, every, like if something happened in this hall right now, Every single of us want to leave the hall. Why? Because you want to survive. That's just a fact. So, and I think that's what happened this summer in the Afghan crisis was really it shook the world because we could really see mm. how many people were actually threatened. And we like what bothered me in the European coverage. You know, I follow a lot what people think mm. on social media, what they say, and at this point. Almost even, you know, the people who are a bit conservative, they were like, we need to save these people, we need to help them, which is a bit paternalistic in some yeah. but And then they would be like, oh, we need to help women and children, not men, because men, they come and they are terrorists. So there is still this stigma, and mm -hmm. even politicians use this in, in Italy. So you being an Afghan woman, having come in mm. Europe at a young age, mm. for the same reason as today people are fleeing because of, you know, this Taliban regime and this, yeah. you know, difficult situation how do you feel about it what's your hope for the country also what would you like maybe you know the international community in the european union mm. to do in yeah. order to put pressure on this you know on this situation yeah um i think obviously as most of us uh, i feel it's very sad to see a country 
almost handed over to a terrorist group because I think Taliban, for what I know, has been a terrorist group for always. And, you know, they were the reason we fled the country. Um, and, then, and then I thought 20 years you would have seen some improvement and something happened and then bang, you're back to scratch. Uh, and then, you know, seeing how they treat people or women and girls in particularly, it's, it's, it's sad. Uh, and I, I was very upset. I also still have family there. Uh, my mom was extremely, um, you know, angry and, and frustrated. Uh, and, and what you can do is obviously create awareness because um, I feel the Taliban has sold this idea to U.S. that they've changed uh, their values mm. and character. For me, it might be, you know, it uh, might be a, um, a wolf disguised in a, in a sheep, but I, I don't know. Uh, I, I hope, generally, I hope that they have changed and I believe that people should get second chances mm. and they want the best for the country. But as it looks right now, I don't think they had a great start. Uh, so, and then for the future, I hope that, you know, we just could have like equal uh, opportunities in terms of that you can go to school, Absolutely. educate yourself and try to have a normal, peaceful life. That's not so much to ask, I guess. Absolutely. And as you say, people just want to have a basic and human rise access to education and for you education is something that has shaped you and I know that you're studying currently so mm. we'll talk about it after but women and young women not being able to study mm. in Afghanistan currently under this regime it's a catastrophe for the future of this country mm. because it's a whole part of society that is deprived from not only education but financial literacy financial independence and access to jobs mm. ultimately Yeah, right. correct. Definitely. And and it's just, I think, there's so many ways this is dumb and stupid. Like, why would you not, like, imagine having a, like, a car, and then you'd be like, you know what, I'm not going to use 50% of the engine, and you, it's a race. Life is a race, you know, you're competing with your neighbor countries with, like, you want to be, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and this, for me, just doesn't make sense from the people making laws, and in terms of how you, you know, the, the girls who cannot attend school education work their lives the value that they have it's it's like almost zero because how what's the, you know the like the next generation of women and girls what are they going to learn from who exactly. so this is, is for me is is shocking it's like almost you're going back to stone age yeah. and but you're you're not in stone age anymore right now it's like 21st century absolutely so I don't know. I, to be honest, I don't know what the, the answer is. The answer is let them go to school, like have a, a chance at life. That's the like that's the minimum thing you can give a, a human. G give them a chance, and then it's up to them if they're gonna succeed or not. But right now, you're not even giving the chance. Like you're like no, nothing. Absolutely. So, absolutely, and it's a difficult situation. This Definitely, is why it is important to mention it for our guests to understand from mm. a person that has family there, that were, was born there and that came here to show especially that, you know, when we talk about refugees, when we talk, there is so many talkings about, oh, they don't really need to come. Mm. Well, I can tell you some of them, they risk their life being there. Mm. And with the Afghan crisis, there is many women that were in positions of power, mayors, elected politicians, members of, you know, uh, government bodies, and then they had to flee. Mm. So it is a tragedy, I would say. But um, I think that is, it is important, at least from my point of view, to keep pressuring our governments mm. to pressure them because we have, you know, the power as, sure. as, as, you know, the countries that unfortunately also played a part in this, in this crisis. Definitely, and yeah. Especially, especially the America. Play uh, a huge part, you're right. Yeah. Definitely. So, yeah, I mean... Let's go back to you and how you're moving forward. Because I also believe that by what you're doing, and I, what I sense is that you want to give back. You have a strong attachment also to, to your origins, to the people that, uh, that you might represent. So uh, I know that you're currently studying. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, tell us. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think what you said, you know, give back to the people and like 
my origin. I do. I think I am very attached. I wouldn't say just to my people. I think I'm at- attached to humanity in general. Uh, why? Because I think we all, all should be in some way. We have a responsibility to somehow help the people around us. Uh, if you can, first you should take a responsibility for yourself. Secondly, if you have the energy for your family, and third for your community. Why? Because that's how what I feel humanity is about. Um, uh, and, and regarding how I want to do that is that, yeah, I'm starting to become a doctor. Um, for me, being a professional footballer, is I love it. It's like the best thing ever. Yeah. But I do it for myself. And I do it for because it makes me happy. But I also wanted to do something where you would give back and have an impact, make a change. And I was like, how can I do that? Well, you can do it in many ways. But for me, it came naturally to be a doctor. Um, you know, I'm actually... Right now, currently de- studying for my exams. It's going very well. <laughs> like here in my back head, I'm trying to remember all the cancer types that your eye could get. No. Um, so it's, it's, and you know, I, I would love to at a certain point be in areas where you're probably the only doctor who you can help, have an impact, have a change. And, and, and I'm look, looking very much forward to it. Uh, I, I love being surrounded by people and contact with humans, you know, especially mm. if they're in need, because that's, mm. again, the compassion part and the empathy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and just, we were talking before, you were mentioning that for you, being a footballer is your passion. You will do it for the rest of your life. Mm. But you want to also, maybe you have this side, which is compassion, and you mm. want to exploit that. You know, it's like a talent also. It's like something that is inner to yeah. you. Yeah, definitely. I do have, I mean, I would say myself, I'm a very com- compassionate person. And uh, again, I think empathy is uh, something that we all have. Hopefully, if, we're not, if you're not a psychopath, because they do not feel empathy, uh, which is 4% of the population again. But uh, otherwise, yeah. Um, and, and, and I would love to, as I said, um, give back. Uh, because I know the importance of helping people who are in need. I was mm-hmm. once in need, I've got some help. Yeah. And that's been a part of the character that I am today. It's shaped me. And mm-hmm. um, it's a beautiful thing. That's beautiful. And that's beautiful, but also it inspired me so much. And I hope it inspired other people. My so pleasure. as we close, <laughs> Nadia, yeah. um, we want to have one piece of advice that you would give to a young woman that has maybe a talent, it could be in sports, it could be she's good at singing, she could be anything, but just maybe she doesn't have the courage yeah. to do it. So look up, look back at your younger self, mm-hmm. what would you tell her, you know? That's great because I'm the expert in giving advice. <laughs> <laughs> Humbleness. <laughs> no, I would say something that I always say when I, in general, to anyone, and it's never too late. I think it's very, very important that you have big dreams, you know, you have to have dreams. And then because a certain point when you have these dreams, they become goals because you're working towards them. Mm -hmm. So dreams, dream big. And secondly, always believe that it's going to happen. Like believe in yourself. No matter what the doubters, the haters are going to tell you, you have to believe that it's going to happen. That's how you achieve your dreams slash goals. And third, it needs a lot of hard work. It does not come. If I have a goal or a dream, I don't just start dreaming and I don't do nothing about it. I put my all my energy, all my focus to reach those goals, uh, dreams. Because now I don't dream anymore. I just set goals. Um, yeah. And then, boom, one day you're there. So these three things, dream big, believe in yourself, and work hard. It doesn't come for free. Thank you. So dream and act. I Basically, love it. Yeah. Thank you so my pleasure. much for being with us. Such a pleasure. Thank you. I learned so much from this you. conversation. Thank you. I appreciate it, Jasmine. And keep following We Belong. And thank you for joining us. <laughs> Bye. Yo. Yo. Oh, I, wow, I love you. Uh, so thank you. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, guys. This was the end of our episode. And you can find us on all platforms and on social media. Bye!